Hello, Peter. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Spider-Man No Way Home Marvel video. They just released a couple of new scenes with Dr. Octopus. They also confirmed Sandman in a slightly different way, so I'll explain that. And we also just learned this amazing story about Andrew Garfield's amazing Spider-Man 3 movie that they almost wound up making that involves Kevin Feige in this really crazy Marvel retreat to try and come up with a way to convince Sony to let them make the next Spider-Man movie. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There is a brand new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer that's going to be coming really soon too. Of course, I'll be doing all the videos for that stuff. I'll start with the brand new Spider-Man No Way Home scenes they released, then I'll talk about the crazy Andrew Garfield story. If you missed the news or you didn't see it all over your feeds, Marvel did a brand new preview of Spider-Man No Way Home a couple days ago, and as part of that, they released a couple new scenes. Both of them involve Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. It's a couple different scenes, but you only actually see him in one of the scenes. The first scene is a little more obvious just because of the context. It kind of links up with some of the trailer footage we've seen before. This is happening during the extended Spider-Man vs. Dr. Octopus fight scene taking place on the George Washington Bridge, where he's wearing the Iron Spider suit in the trailer. Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus says, Hello, Peter, as if he recognizes this Peter Parker, even though it's Tom Holland's Peter Parker. And even though he doesn't really look like Tobey Maguire, he kind of looks like him from a distance. And he's wearing a suit that's the exact same suit Tobey Maguire was wearing during Spider-Man 3. So they're trying to make Tom Holland look as much like Tobey Maguire as possible without literally photoshopping his face onto Tom Holland's face. Most of you have probably seen the memes people have been posting about this just because it's kind of a funny scene with Spider-Man turning and running away from Dr. Octopus, whereas normally you'd expect Spider-Man to be web slinging away. This is not the first time that Spider-Man has been caught running away from one of his villains. They did it all the way during the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie where he's running away from the Green Goblin. You also notice that he doesn't have his iron spider legs anymore, so the fight makes a little more sense now. It's probably happening a little bit earlier in the film, like it's not part of any big final battle or anything like that. And it's just meant to be a big boss level villain upgrade fight where Spider-Man gets his ass kicked and has to upgrade his new Spider-Man suit. And by having Dr. Octopus just hand him his ass so easily, it makes him seem like much more of a threat in the movie. But then Spider-Man has to go to ground and develop some new strategies for fighting Dr. Octopus's abilities with his arms. And obviously there are all the other Sinister Six villains with their different abilities too. Spider-Man will have to evolve his fighting techniques. That's usually the main reason why he gets all the new suits in each new movie is that the suits are tuned for whatever the villain's abilities are. Like that's why he's probably wearing the black suit, which looks kind of like the anti-shock suit combined with the anti-ox suit from Spider-Man PS4. And why he needs the addition of Doctor Strange's magic tied to that black suit. But if you didn't realize too, the reason why they're using the George Washington Bridge for this fight scene in particular is the same bridge that Spider-Man and MJ get caught on by that police helicopter before everybody gets hauled in for questioning at the beginning of the movie. If you're not from New York City or you're not familiar with the landscape of Manhattan, the George Washington Bridge connects Manhattan and Queens. Spider-Man and MJ both live in Queens, so it's like he's being caught by everyone, including Dr. Octopus, when he's trying to go home. But this scene of them getting caught on the bridge is before Doctor Strange's spell and before Doctor Octopus and the other multiverse Sinister Six characters get brought to Earth, just denoted by the different suits that Spider-Man is wearing when the fight is happening. And based on the way they play this scene in the trailer, like when the fight begins and you see Doctor Octopus's arms come in and he greets Peter, hello Peter, Spider-Man suits up in the Iron Spider suit. He's thinking to himself that he's upgraded to the Iron Spider because it's the most advanced, most hardcore suit that he has. He just used it during Avengers Endgame in the big final battle. It's got the greatest defenses. It's got the greatest weapons. The instant kill mode on it is also way more hardcore than the instant kill mode from the advanced suit or the original Stark Tech suit. So if it worked so well against Thanos' army, how could one dude with eight arms be worse than Thanos' army? Thus Spider-Man's overconfidence leading to him getting his ass handed to him and them making Dr. Octopus come off as being way more of a threat. And unless they're pulling some tricks on us here with the way they edited this trailer, the way this fight scene with him goes down the bridge, it also seems like Dr. Octopus is either using Willem Dafoe Green Goblin's pumpkin bombs in the fight or if they're playing tricks on us, there could be multiple villains in this fight. Marvel has done that all the time in the past, just mess with footage like the Avengers Infinity War trailer, the Avengers Endgame trailer, just to mislead you so that you don't know what's actually happening in a fight. And Dr. Octopus probably just makes quick work of his Iron Spider suit, just ripping all the Peter's Iron Spider legs right off of it, after which Spider-Man is like, oh shit, and then just turns around and starts hauling ass away. And they're just playing this as a funny moment because the bridge that he's on doesn't really have anything for him to swing off of, so he has to literally run. You also probably remember during Spider-Man Homecoming, they used this funny twist with him literally having to run across the golf course because it was nothing for him to swing off of. This 
sucks. The other new scene that they released as part of this preview is of Spider-Man in the advanced suit. They're just calling the new Steve Ditko red and black suit the advanced suit now. He's gone back to that suit. He's not wearing the mask. He's all bloodied up, and he's in the middle of a different fight with probably Dr. Octopus. The reason why I think this is Dr. Octopus he's fighting, crouched down in this fighting stance, is because if you look closely at the metal platform that he's standing on, zoom and enhance, it looks exactly like Dr. Octopus's fusion reaction platform from Spider-Man 2. The last time we saw him in that movie, he had pushed the platform into the East River and was sinking with it down to the bottom. Alfred Molina kind of gave away or spoiled the Dr. Octopus plot, the beginning of Spider-Man No Way Home, however you want to think about it. Kevin Feige was not amused. He said that the story of his Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man No Way Home begins right after he went into the river at the end of Spider-Man 2. Like for him, when Spider-Man No Way Home picks up, it will be as if no time has passed for him at all. That's why he's wearing the exact same trench coat. He looks the exact same. They're using special effects to de-age him almost 20 years to make him look the exact same. But all the patterns, the structures on this fusion platform just look the exact same as the structures Spider-Man is standing on. So when Doctor Strange's spell to make everyone forget Peter Parker as Spider-Man starts working and he starts weaving together aspects of alternate timelines, alternate universes, also inadvertently bringing all the Sinister Six characters from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, and Dr. Octopus legit shows up inside the MCU, Doctor Strange probably just accidentally brought his fusion platform with him. When they released these new scenes, Tom Holland also did a special interview where he previewed the special new mystery character that they haven't announced in the film yet. He said some of his favorite scenes to film in the movie were with this new special mystery character. I actually think that he's talking about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man because he's talking about having dinner with Aunt May, with Happy Hogan, and this mystery character. And how the conversation they're having is about what it means to be a superhero. And that just seems like the way they would use Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man characters in the movie, helping Tom Holland's Peter Parker Spider-Man understand what it really means to be Spider-Man. The other really cool thing that they just did on the sly was kind of confirm Sandman with one of these big covers. So if you look at the artwork here, you can actually see what looks like Sandman's hand rising out of all this Sinister Six art. We've all seen the trailer a billion times, and I think we're all in agreement that this figure here that's forming here, this earth that's coming together, isn't a giant dust cloud. It's actually Sandman forming into a giant face. It's just that during this fight, Spider-Man also seems like he's fighting Jamie Foxx's Electro because of the yellow lightning, and he's also wearing the black suit too. There's supposed to be a new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer soon. They'll either release it with the Eternals movie real soon or later in November with the Sony Ghostbusters movie. But during that new footage, we'll probably get more legit Sinister Six characters and it will give us more context for how they're all coming together and what's really going on. John Watts, the director, said that behind the scenes at Marvel, they're calling the movie Spider-Man Endgame because it's so big in scope. Like, what did Avengers Endgame mean for the Infinity Saga of movies? This is the same thing, but for the Spider-Man movies. I just did a separate Spider-Man video where Tom Holland was kind of explaining how this was going to work. Like, if we come back and we do more movies, it'll be a completely different vibe, a completely different story. I'll add a link for that video at the end of this and down in the description. But the crazy Andrew Garfield, Amazing Spider-Man 3 story that you've probably seen in the past day or so is all part of this big Marvel history book. So there's this history book that they publish about the history of Marvel Studios, and it tells all these behind the scenes stories about what was happening when they were trying to make all these movies the past 10 plus years. And obviously a big portion of it focuses on them bringing Spider-Man into the MCU because that was such a big deal. The story goes that back in 2014, when Sony was getting ready to make Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Andrew Garfield and their separate Sinister Six movie, Kevin Feige held a special retreat for the Marvel Studios people where they tried to come up with a way to convince Sony to let them have the Spider-Man character. Like, what can we do to stop them from making Amazing Spider-Man 3 and convince them to let us make a new Spider-Man movie that's completely different? It sounds totally crazy, but obviously the rest is history. We know how that all played out. They wound up getting the Spider-Man character and making all these movies with Sony. But as soon as they release more Spider-Man No Way Home footage, of course I'll do a brand new video, or if you have any big questions that you want me to answer in bonus videos, just let me know in the comments. Everyone click here for my Marvel Eternals movie review, and click here for that new Spider-Man No Way Home Sinister Six video, and to learn about the future of Spider-Man in the MCU. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.